Okay, now for question number five from the P3 specimen paper for the International A level. Um, we're given here a function f, f of x is defined by f of x equals 7 over x minus 3 minus 5x plus 22 over x squared plus 7x plus 12. And this is really important in these questions, which a lot of people ignore these statements, but especially in C3, for P3 and P4, this is really important. They've given us the domain of this function, which is x is an element of the real numbers, which is pretty normal, and x is greater than minus 3. So that's really important, especially if they ask us to find uh, something in relation to the inverse function. It's really important that they told us this because that means this function it doesn't exist when x is three minus three or less okay so now show that f of x can be written in the form a over bx plus c where a b and c are constants to be found okay so what i need to do is combine these two into one fraction and in order to do that you should be able to spot that this denominator here can be factorized so you have f of x is equal to seven over x plus three minus, I'm going to write this as 5x plus 22 over, and this can be factorized, you need two numbers which multiply to give you 12 and add to give you 7, or they're 3 and 4, so it's going to be x plus 3 and x plus 4. Now, in order to combine these together as one fraction, I can make both the denominators the same by simply multiplying the denominator by x plus 4, so I multiply the numerator by x plus 4 as well, then I've got two fractions with the same denominator. So this is x plus 3 times x plus 4 minus 5x plus 22 over x plus 3 times x plus 4. I don't have to change this one because it's already x plus 3 times x plus 4. Now you have the same denominator and we can subtract the numerators and write it under 1 common denominator. So you say f of x is equal to, you have one common denominator, which is x plus 3x plus 4. And the numerator is going to be 7x plus 28. Now, remember, you have a minus, and I'll just put it in a bracket to make it very clear. It's minus 5x and plus, and plus 22. So that minus affects both of these values. So a lot of you will make the mistake of writing minus 5x and plus 22, but it's minus 5x and minus 22. So you're going to have 7x minus 5x, which is 2x. And you're going to have 28 minus 22, which is 6. Over, and you have x plus 3 times x plus 4. 28 minus 22, which is plus 6, sorry. 28 minus 22, which is plus 6. So now we're going to take out the common factor from the numerator which is a 2, so we have 2 times x plus 3 over x plus 3 times x plus 4, and we see the x plus 3s cancel out, so we're left with 2 over x plus 4, and that's the way we had to write it down as a over bx plus c, so if you write a is equal to 2, and b is equal to 1, and c is equal to 4, that's even more complete. Okay, so there we have written in the form required. Okay, then it says, hence, find the inverse of fx. Okay, so because it means hence means using the result that you found, so we can just take f of x and write it as 2 over x plus 4, in this form that we've simplified. And we want to find the inverse of this function. Okay, first, algebraically, what we do is we say, okay, let's call it y equals 2 over x plus 4. Now, remember, when we find the inverse, the x and y are being swapped around. So, that my x-axis becomes my y-axis, and my y-axis becomes my x-axis. So, I can rewrite it as x equals 2 over y plus 4. And to find the inverse, I have to rearrange it to make uh, y the subject of the formula. So, what I can do is I can cross-multiply. Okay, so I can say y plus 4 equals 2 over x and then I can subtract 4 from both sides so I have y equals 2 over x minus 4 and to make it even more complete I can write it as one whole fraction so this is like 4x over x so you end up with 2 minus 4x 
all over x. Okay, so the inverse function is 2 minus 4x over x. Okay, now because the domain of the original function was restricted, that means the domain of the inverse function will be restricted. So the domain of the inverse function of x is the range of the original function of x. So if I find the range of the original function of x, uh, it will then tell me the domain of the inverse function. So the original function of x, f of x, is equal to 2 over x plus 4. And remember, x is a real number and x is greater than minus 3. X is greater than minus 3. It's really important. Most people, they, they don't um, mention that. This is, I'm actually answering, yeah. So part b. So most people, they don't actually uh, go further than this. Find the inverse function and they think they're finished. But one of the marks is also for stating its domain because it's defined um, according to what the original function is. And the original function was defined that x is greater than minus 3. Okay, so we have to also state the domain of the inverse function because that affects that. So now, let's draw the original function. Now, this is like, um, if you think about it, it's like a transform, translation, transformation of 2 over x or 1 over x. So, but first of all, what's happened is it's moved four spaces to the left. So the asymptotes are minus 4 x equals minus 4 and then it's multiplied by 2 so it's stretched out so it's going to look something like this okay however because our domain of the original function is limited to minus up to minus 3 all of these parts actually don't exist now because i've limited the domain of the function to x is greater than minus 3 so the function starts at minus 3 well, just after minus 3, minus 3 is not included. And it continues going on until it reaches, well, it gets closer and closer to the x-axis without reaching. So the range of my original function is between 0 and this point here. Now, this point here is when x equals minus 3 is put into this function. So when I put um, minus 3 into this function, I'm going to get 2 over 1, which is 2. 2 over minus 3 plus 4. So I know that this value is 2 here. So I can see the range of my original function is between 0 and 2. Not including 2, not including 0. So therefore, the domain of, the, of this function is x is between 0 and 2. So there's the answer. Okay, so you can say x is member of the real numbers and x is between 0 and 2. Okay, so it's very important that you state the domain of your inverse function if the domain of the original function was restricted because that, of course, affects the domain of your inverse function. Okay, so it's very important that you do that. And I hope you understood how we did that in this, in this case. Okay, remember... The range of the original function is the same as the domain of the inverse function. Okay, so that's part B. And part C says, solve f of fx equals 2 over 5. f of fx. So you have to substitute f of x. Now, what was f of x again? Let's go back and make sure. f of x, once we simplified it, was 2 over x plus 4. So it's 2 over x plus 4. So we've got to solve the equation. Um, 2 over x plus 4 inside itself. So you've got to substitute this function inside itself. So I've got to put inside function f itself. So I've got to substitute 2x plus 4, 2 over x plus 4 inside the function f, which gives me 2 over, and I've got to replace this x with all of this. So this is 2 over x plus 4, okay, um, plus 4. Right, so I've replaced this x, okay, with 2 over x plus 4, basically. So I, this is basically 2 divided by, and I can make this into one fraction here. This is going to be 
x plus 4, and that's going to be 2 plus 4x plus 16. 2 divided by, that's 2, and that's 4x plus 16. Okay, so that's 2 divided by, that's uh, 4x plus 18 over x plus 4. Okay, which is 2 times x plus 4 over 4x plus 18. You're multiplying it by the reciprocal of that fraction. So we can see that here you've got 2 times x plus 4. And here you can take out a common factor of 2. And you've got 2x plus 9. So you end up with these cancelling out. So you're left with f of fx is equal to x plus 4 divided by 2x plus 9 and then we've got to solve the equation where that equals 2 fifths so x plus 4 over 2x plus 9 is equal to 2 fifths so if we cross multiply here we've got 5 times x plus 4 is equal to 2 times 2x plus 9 okay so solving that equation you get 5x plus 20 is equal to 4x plus 18 so you're going to get x is equal to minus 2 so there's a solution to the last part of the question substitute f inside of itself and then solve that equation okay so there we have the answer to part to question number five and as i mentioned the important thing is where most students mess up is if the inverse function is found they just find the inverse function algebraically but they don't think about its domain and that's especially important when the domain of the original function is restricted you must state the domain of the inverse function as well okay that's the important thing in this question